Good day, everyone. Welcome to Jamovi for Educational Research Tutorial Series, Episode 9, Cruz-Kalwalis H-Test. What is Cruz-Kalwalis H-Test? If your data fails parametric assumption test or is ordinal in nature, the Cruz-Kalwalis H-Test, also known as the one-way ANOVA on ranks, is a non-parametric equivalent to the independent samples ANOVA. It can be used for comparing two or more independent samples of equal or different sample sizes. Like the man with the U test and Wilcoxon's test, it is a rank-based test. As with the ANOVA, Kruskal-Wallis H test is an omnibus test which does not specify which specific groups of the independent variable are statistically significantly different from each other. Here is our sample situation. A teacher wants to determine which among the three teaching methods such as direct instruction, inquiry strategy, constructivism approach is the most effective in teaching social science in online learning modality. The sections were taught using these three different methods. At the end of one quarter, the same test was given to the three groups to measure their academic achievement. Here are the tasks that we will go through in this tutorial. Perform the test and check the assumption. Interpret the results. Report the analysis. Once your dataset has been successfully imported in the Jamovi software, you're now ready to perform the test. So make sure to keep your focus on the process. Let us now begin. First thing to do is to check the assumption and confirm if there really is a violation in the test of normality. We may either click any of the two, one-way ANOVA or ANOVA. Since the result of Shapiro Week's test is significant, which is a violation of the normality test, at this point, proceed to conducting Kruskal Wallis H test. Test now continue. Since there's no option for the descriptive statistics, you have to separately conduct it by clicking descriptives in the exploration. When it comes to interpretation of results, these are the parts that you have to pay attention to. It should be clear that the reason we use the cruz Wallis H test is because of the violation in the assumption for the test of normality, wherein the value obtained is less than 0.05. Since it is stated there that a low p-value suggests a violation of that particular assumption, you must be able to get greater than 0.05 to meet this assumption. Although the assumption for homogeneity of variance is met, it violates the assumption for normality. So instead of one-way analysis of variance, Kruskal-Wallis H test was used. For the results of the Kruskal-Wallis H test, always look at the p-value which should be less than 0.05 for it to be significant. Effect size is also important since it helps us understand the magnitude of differences found 
whereas statistical significance examines whether the findings are likely to be due to chance. In Jamovi, the only available for Kruskal-Wallis is the epsilon squared. Here is a guide for interpretation. We also conducted post hoc analysis since it's also important for the reason that it is used to compare the groups pairwise using statistical correction to avoid type 1 error where the null hypothesis could be rejected when it is in fact true due to stricter acceptance criteria. Take note that it should only be conducted when the result of the kruskal wallis H test is significant, otherwise it is meaningless. This it is represented by this table under the DSCF pairwise comparisons. This is how we interpret the results. First, compare constructivism approach and direct instruction. Then examine the p-value if it is significant with less than 0.05. Next that you'll compare is constructivism approach again, but this time it is versus increase strategy. Again, look at the p-value. Same goes with direct instruction versus inquiry strategy. For the descriptive statistics, as you have noticed earlier while performing the test, I unclick everything except the median. You can actually add more according to what you need, but since we use non-parametric tests, it is the median that we should get and also the one that we should report. This analysis report follows the APA format. Provided with the tables of results for inferential statistics, descriptive statistics, the assumption for normality tests, and the post hoc analysis, this is how you should report the analysis in order. Take note of the terms in blue font and the format of reporting values in red font. The study aims to determine which among the three teaching methods such as direct instruction, inquiry strategy, and constructivism approach is the most effective in teaching social science in online learning modality by comparing students' academic achievement. The academic achievement was measured using a teacher-made test. Prior to conducting the analysis, the test of normality was examined using Shapirovic statistics, which showed that the assumption of normality was violated when represented by the given values. Thus, Kruskal Wallis H test was used as an alternative to one way ANOVA. The result of Kruskal Wallis H test reveals that students' academic achievement significantly differs among the type of teaching methods represented by the given values. There is a relatively strong effect size in this analysis represented by the given value of 0.18. Post Post hoc analysis using DSCF showed that the academic achievement of students who were thought using inquiry strategy and constructivism approach are significantly different from the academic achievement of students who were thought using direct instruction, represented by the given values. No significant difference is found between that academic achievement of students who were thought using inquiry strategy and constructivism approach represented by the given values. The findings suggest that both inquiry strategy and constructivism approach are more effective than direct instruction. And that ends this session. Thank you for watching Jamovi for Educational Research Tutorial Series. Stay tuned for the next episode. See you next time!